But there's another part that you do definitely need to know about. Those of you at Namco really need to know about this. You probably already do. There's a part that we use now to control things called a triac. Triac. And the triac is an AC controller. In fact, that's where the ACE, the AC in, in triac comes from. It has three terminals and it works on AC, so they call it a triac. Um, the schematic symbol for the triac looks a lot like the SCR, but it's actually like two SCRs hooked up together. In other words, if I draw an SCR here, it looks like a diode with the gate. Remember that thing coming out? It's called the gate. And we still have the cathode and the anode. If I extend this out and just draw another arrow pointing the other direction, now I have a triac, basically. Because that's all it is. The SCR would only control uh, current flowing in just one direction, the same direction that the arrow pointed. Uh, the triac can go both ways. And here's how the triac works. It's very, very simple. Very simple. Uh, in fact, I, I'm sorry, but I have to redraw this a little lower here. In the triac, instead of having an anode and a cathode and a gate, we have the gate. That's the same. This is called main terminal 1 and main terminal 2, if I'm not mistaken. They're actually interchangeable. And where we use these guys is to power things like, for instance, in uh, a basketball game. You know that there's a bar that locks the balls in place, and that bar raises up when you put the coin in and the balls roll down. Well, the thing that raises the bar is either a motor or a giant honking solenoid. I mean, a, just a giant coil that goes clunk and energizes and raises the bar. Or it's a motor that spins and raises it up. Regardless of that, these are powered by triacs. If it's a motor, that's the schematic symbol for a motor, just a circle with an M in it. And it's connected just like this. It's, it's really incredibly simple. Here's your AC power plug coming in, your AC power. Presumably, there's a fuse in, in this line somewhere. You don't really have to draw the fuse in. And the gate is connected to the computer system. When the computer wants to raise the, the bar, or in, in a ski ball machine, energize the solenoid to let the balls come down, or any, anything that needs a massive motor or a big, big coil, instead of using a transistor, we use this triac. When the computer wants to energize the thing, the motor, the solenoid, whatever it is, it simply sends a teeny tiny amount of voltage and current out to the gate. It's very sensitive. The gate's very sensitive. That energizes the triac. It's just a switch. It just closes the triac. In other words, it shorts out right across the triac, completes the circuit. Obviously, we have a complete circuit now. And the thing energizes. When the computer wants the thing to shut off, it simply removes the gate voltage, the triac turns off, it's now an open circuit, the motor obviously stops turning. And that's all there is to it. It's very, very simple. There's just one device, this triac thing, that controls this stuff. And again, there is no test for this thing. The only junction drop you get is like from gate to main terminal one, I think. I'm not, I'm not even sure about that because I've never tested one. Same deal. If I have a problem with a, a basketball game and the, the bar never raises, the triac's bad. If I have a problem where it's blowing that fuse, and as soon as I put the fuse in, the motor starts to turn or the, or the solenoid energizes and stays energized all the time, it's the triac. That's all there is to it. In fact, you can even get these things at Radio Shack. I don't even stock triacs because they do have at Radio Shack like a 600 volt, 8 amp triac. And they're, they're rated by uh, voltage and current the same exact way that diodes are. 